A Short History of Nearly Everything by Bill Bryson Chapter 1 At the beginning of this wonderful book, it describes in great detail how our universe was created from nothing and how large it has gotten since then. Chapter 2 Scientists believe that there are around 140 billion galaxies and a quarter of a billion stars in each one. This means that there are around 3.5 times 10 to the 22nd stars in the universe. For those of you that don't know what that means, it comes out to around 3,500 sextillion stars in the universe. Chapter 3 In this vast amount of stars, some of them collapse in themselves, creating what is known as a nova star. The closest star is 50,000 light years away and weighs about 200 billion pounds. Chapter 4 The next question on scientists' minds was what was the mass of the Earth? Some of the scientists used contour lines to help them determine the mass of our planet. Henry Cavendish was a renowned scientist during his time and was named the most gifted English scientist of his age. He was able to calculate Earth's mass up to 1% of its actual weight. Other scientists tried using trigonometry and others used triangulation, but neither of them worked because they both assumed that the Earth was a perfect sphere. Chapter 5 They then started to think on how fossils got up so high in mountains. The scientific community divided up into two groups, Plutonus and Neptunus. Plutonus believed fossils got there due to internal movement, while the Neptunus believed they got up there due to rising and falling water. Chapter 6 While hunting for fossils, scientists realized that the further down fossils are, the older the fossil is. Surprisingly, Mary Anning was able to find three extinct groups of reptiles. Chapter 7 In alchemy, you use experiments to try to turn metals into gold, while chemistry uses science. In chemistry, one of the most helpful tools is called the periodic table of elements. This table is set up periodically, which means that the elements are organized due to their similar properties. Chapter 8 there is believed to be a luminiferous ether that is said to be the medium for light waves to travel through. Einstein's relativity theories were thought to be non-intuitive because they were so complicated that nobody understood them. Chapter 9 Everything in the universe is made up of atoms. Since we came from the Big Bang, we are made up from the atoms that were created billions of years ago. An experiment done by Rutherford was able to discover that atoms are mainly empty space by shooting alpha particles at gold foil. Chapter 10 There is a terrific tool called carbon-14 dating, which is a way of measuring the age of things by using the isotope of carbon. The only issue with this technique is that it is not very accurate and can only be used with objects that are up to 40,000 years old. Chapter 11 Neutrinos are subatomic particles produced by the decay of radioactive elements. However, it is very hard to trap them, and scientists use multiple tanks holding 12.5 million gallons of heavy water to catch them since they are massless and can go through almost everything. Chapter 12 There are many theories on how Earth got its mountains. One of the theories is called the Big Apple Theory. This theory basically says that Earth's surface was very hot and then it cooled down and the mountains were created, just like a cold big apple. This theory was later changed when they made more discoveries about the magnetic field, which helped support the theory of continental drift. Chapter 13 Contrary to movies, the asteroids in the asteroid belt are actually millions of miles away from each other. In the cluster, there are about 2,000 asteroids that are big enough to destroy our civilization. Chapter 14 The two deepest mines are found in South Africa and go two miles down into Earth. Earthquakes are caused when tectonic plates move. Contrary to popular belief, the Richter scale is a scale of force, not damage. Chapter 15 Just like earthquakes, if volcanoes don't erupt for a long time, they might have a big explosion waiting to happen. At Yellowstone National Park, there is a hotspot, which is a supervolcano, that hasn't erupted for a very long time. Chapter 16 One of the biggest dangers when swimming isn't your body getting crushed, since it is made of water, but instead the gases you have inside of your lungs. Because of the pressure, it causes them to collapse. If untreated for a long time, you get what's called the bends. This is caused when nitrogen creates bubbles and makes people bend over. Chapter 17 the reason it gets colder the higher up you go is because there are less air molecules the higher up you go, 
which means there are less molecules hitting your body, making it colder. For every 1,000 feet you climb up, the temperature drops 3 degrees Fahrenheit. Chapter 18 Some of the first deep ocean vessels were made around 1930 from 1.5 inch thick cast iron, which could hold two men, and could go down around 600 feet. One of the more recent ships was founded by the U.S. Navy, called the Bathscape, was also able to go down 35,820 feet, or 7 miles. Chapter 19 For life to occur, you need DNA and proteins. Proteins are surprisingly very rare and hard to synthesize, since they are a very long molecule and need to be in a specific order for it to be considered a protein. Early life began around 3.85 billion years ago with very small bacterial organisms whose sole purpose was to live, reproduce, and swarm. Complex life, however, began 2.1 billion years ago. Chapter 20 There are bacteria that are harmful to your body and can get you sick. To fight this, doctors have created antibiotics. This is basically a weakened form of the bacteria that you can digest, which exposes you to it allowing your body to create antibodies which will help defend and attack it. This is slowly stopping to work because the bacteria are becoming stronger. Chapter 21 The reason we don't have many fossils of our ancient selves is because there needs to be very specific circumstances. The animal needs to die in the correct type of rock, needs to decompose without oxygen, and most importantly, it needs to be found. 95% of fossils found are from underwater creatures. The reason there aren't many land animal fossils is because the bodies either weren't in the correct circumstances or they were eaten or left to rot. Chapter 22 Some of the reasons land animals moved onto land is because it became very dangerous in the water due to plate tectonics and coastal habitats disappearing. Because of this, plants were the first living organisms to live on land. Next to live on land were small bugs that look like wood lice or pill bugs. Chapter 23 Species live in their own respective ways and contribute to the earth and the existence of other species. These species are classified by what they are and what they do. The exact number of species on earth is not able to count since new ones are popping up while old ones are dying out. Chapter 24 Cells are the little bits that make up all living things. Cells do everything for the organism. It produces energy and gives us what we need. The making up of a cell is complicated, but makes our existence much easier to comprehend. Chapter 25 Evolution is the idea that organisms have not always been the way they are, but have advanced from previous forms. Proposed by Charles Darwin, he said that not all species will adapt. The only species that would adapt would be the ones that need to adapt to their environment. This idea is called natural selection. Chapter 26 DNA is probably the most important thing in our existence. It is what makes us people different from each other. The reason we are the way we are, look the way we look, and think the way we think is because of the small things inside of us. Chapter 27 the Ice Age was a major part of the existence of our Earth. The Ice Age was a time where the Earth was freezing. Most of the world was covered by ice and the temperatures had dropped drastically. The Ice Age was not a one-time thing. There have been around 17 glacial episodes in our history. Chapter 28 Humans did not just pop out of nowhere. They came out of a process of evolutionary development. We first started out as apes living in the trees, but after thousands of millions of years, we became us. Chapter 29 Early humans decided to make technological advances by creating something that everyone nowadays uses, tools. Migrating to different parts of the world also allowed them to spread out and begin new civilizations. Chapter 30 Us as humans have all the capabilities in the world to make what we want of it. It's up to us to decide what we want to do with this beautiful place we call home.